My name is Alicia, AKA Edmiston Creations, and I am a wife, mom, athlete, and social worker that lives in the mountains of South Central New Mexico. I have lived in New Mexico for the past eight years. Originally, I am from North Carolina. You may notice my Southern twang. I So I definitely have an accent. Usually people around here will ask me within like 30 seconds of me talking, are you from Texas? <laughs> no, from North Carolina. Um, we moved to New Mexico about eight years ago for my husband's school and we left it so we decided to stay. We are raising our two children here and I have, you know, been considering starting up a YouTube, champ YouTube channel for some time now. I, you know, but I had all the usual excuses or reasons not to. I just was like, okay, like who am I to start a, a vlog? Like if I post and share videos, like no one's gonna watch them, no one's gonna care. Uh, all the usual like inner critic and self-doubt kind of thoughts that creep in when you are gonna try something new and potentially vulnerable. Well, not potentially, this is definitely vulnerable. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's new, it's different, it's scary. And I, you know, I also don't really have any video editing skills. So this is gonna be like low frills kind of a deal. I, I just, I, I am interested in perhaps learning some more of like, like video editing skills and stuff in the future, but for now it's just going to be like, this is what it is. Um, so, <laughs> but I mean, I, I realized like all of these thoughts and, and it, things that would come to my mind about starting a vlog were just, they were barriers. I was creating, you know, and I was getting in the way of myself in pushing myself to grow personally and to, share like things that I feel like I have to offer and you know it's really not up to me if people find value in it or not that's other people's choice and decision so I recognize that boundary and respect it so um, I find value in starting this blog to have a space to share more about my making process I love to knit, sew, and crochet, so primarily that is going to be you know, content that I will share about, but I also have other interests. I'm into weightlifting and CrossFit and running. My husband and I actually met during a trail race in the Linville Gorge of North Carolina. Um, it's very you know, quintessential fairy tale sort of meeting. Um, you know, maybe I'll share that story sometime, but uh, if you guys are interested, but yeah, we, we met in the middle of an, an ultra. And so running is something that we share in common and a passion for health and fitness. And so we actually just finished up doing a workout uh, earlier today together and my husband still is really into long distance running and so you know that might be something that i share about like with his races if we go and like cheer for him and stuff and crew for him because with long distance races like over 30 miles um you know they need like food and water and change their shoes and sometimes sleep <laughs> um any number of things so that's kind of what a crew person would do. So maybe, you know, I would share some about that if that's something that happens to be of interest for, you know, me to share. And I also, I am a licensed clinical social worker. I have a private therapy practice um, and serve clients part-time and I mom the rest of the time. I'm the primary caregiver to my children. So I really wanted to have a space as well um, 
to be able to share some general mental health and wellness tips, I, I really find, you know, like spreading awareness as an important thing. And that's just part of my social work values is to, you know, advocate and educate. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I feel like this is a good medium to be able to share some general mental health tips and wellness advice. And so look, look for future content that will be related to that as well. Um, so let's see, I have been a licensed clinical social worker since 2014. So I've been practicing for several years now and, and it's one of my passions for sure. Uh, so, um, I think that's it as far as just kind of the general purpose of me starting this vlog and this channel. I finally got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm just going to face my fear because I strongly believe in, you know, I mean, facing your fears, using courage and just do it anyway. I mean, I'm, you're always going to be afraid. Um, I mean, fear is a normal survival response to a new and difficult, challenging situation. So I finally decided to face my fear whenever Maggie um, of Black Mountain Yarn Shop, aka Trillium Fiber, she released the Alder cardigan, which I'm wearing <laughs> this week. And I love this cardigan. I was so fortunate to be selected to test this for Maggie. I've done a couple of other test knits for Maggie and her designs fit so well. And she's got a really unique construction with this. It is top down, but you do a provisional cast on and do your shoulders first and connect them together and do a three needle bind off to create the yoke. Um, she did this similar, you know, kind of construction for the Aspen tee. And I also tested that it's one of my most worn garments, um, because it's so easy to layer and pair with other items in my wardrobe. So, and the fit is great with, with it too. So I, it's a very unique construction and I really, I've, I've not seen anybody else do it. So, uh, you know, kudos to Maggie and her creativity for sure. I mean, maybe somebody else has done construction like this before, but I think it's really, it gives a great fit and it's a lot of fun to make too. It's not just your usual, just cast on and go down, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that, that has its place. I love a top down yoke construction because it is super straightforward, but, um, yeah, I mean, this one's just fun to knit and with the provisional cast on, I love how she chose to use the you use the contrast color to do your three needle bind off which gives this visible seam and it's so cute I like it just gives it this nice earthy vibe and the same with um your button band and your cuffs and hem you use the main color to bind off so it gives this really cute little detail of the visible seams I just love that <laughs> as well as uh, she used garter stitch instead of like one by one rib and my contrast color is quite dark so it's hard to see but I love garter stitch I it's one of my faves so I loved that just I love the whole look and vibe of this cardigan and I chose to use Idlewild Clay toggles. I pretty much use her buttons for like most of my projects. Whenever I see a project with buttons, I'm like, OMG, it has buttons. Sweet. I'm going to order some Idlewild Clay buttons. Um, and by the way, I purchase all of my buttons from her. I am not sponsored at all. I just love supporting small businesses and her buttons are phenomenal. Um, she also sells ceramic buttons and other ceramic items. She's dyeing yarn now. She's a really um, prolific creator and like Renaissance woman, you know, like doing all different things. But anyway, I love these toggles and how they give this cardigan this nice 
earthy vibe, which I totally was going for. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably figured out that earthy's kind of my vibe. And I really enjoy, I don't know, like that's just kind of my style. I, I like that earth element in my wardrobe. So, um, I, let's see, the yarn I used for this project was um, Jill Draper Mohonk Sport. I believe Maggie used Naughty Pine DK in her, um, in her sample. And so Mohonk Sport is a very plump sport weight yarn. And it, I was able to get gauge with this yarn and, and it really, you know, I mean, I think like the fabric turned out great. It's not, I mean, it's very warm. It's not holy or like too airy or anything like that. So Mohonk Sport does work well for this pattern. Um, but also, you know, if you follow Maggie or the Black Mountain Yarn Shop, they did a live where they recommended some great yarn substitutions and stuff like that. So, but any DK weight yarn would really work well for this. I think Maggie really recommends a non super wash base versus super wash to make sure that you get nice stitch definition and not like a lot of growth, but you could certainly use super wash. You just want to account for the potential growth. And when you swatch, make sure that you block first to see that you get gauge. Um, all the normal things that you typically do <laughs> when making a garment to make sure that you end up with something you like that fits. So, um, outfit details of like what I'm wearing right now. I sewed a Stasia dress. This is actually the dress that I wore, um, in my FO photos on Instagram. So this is sewn with knit fabric. I got this fabric from Osser Santa Fe and it is an organic interlock knit from Birch Fabrics. I just recently learned to sew with knits. Um, I took the online Sew Liberated Learn to Sew with Knits class and there were just so many really great tips in there in how to approach sewing with knits versus woven fabric. And I was really, really helpful for me to get over I mean again I had fear showing up I'm like oh my god I've never sewn with knit fabric I can't do it all the things and I don't know like taking that class was just so great and like holding my hand and helping me face that fear of just getting over the hump and doing it anyway <laughs> so I dove in I sewed a limestone top first then a couple of bedrock tees and then i tried the Stasia dress. And this is actually the first project that I used a twin needle on. And um, so a twin needle gives a really nice finished looking hem. I think you can see on the bottom of my dress here, um, that hemline just gives like a nice polis polished finish. <laughs> Um, not to flash you guys or anything, you see a little bit of my knee there, but I, yeah, I really love how the twin needle hemmed this and it turned out. I, for this project, I also, for the stage address, I had to get over my fear of negative ease and because this dress is designed to have about four inches of negative ease. And I was like, oh my God, it might be too small. Like, I don't know, like just all the thing. I don't want it to be too tight. Like, is it gonna like, as, I don't know. It was really scary, but I trusted the process and I went with the size that I, I took my measurements and I went with the size that I needed with negative ease. And I love the fit. I'm so glad that I got over the whole negative ease thing. And I typically don't really like layering items with three quarter sleeves, but because this is so fitted, um, it layers really nicely with my sweaters and I don't have the bulk or I don't feel the bulk of sleeves underneath my sweater. And I love that. 
So yeah, I mean, I already have at least three more Stasia dress versions in my head. I wanna make a black one, a copper one, and a cream one. I'm gonna do different lengths and different sleeves lengths, different skirt lengths, I should say, and different sleeve lengths with those different color options. But yeah, I'm gonna definitely gonna sew those in the next few months. And I just think both the, the Alder cardigan and the Stasia dress are great staple pieces and I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of them. So super excited. I also wanted to give a nod to my friend Jen Studio. Her Instagram handle is Studio Mil Rosas. Um, she's the one, like she made these earrings um, I also purchased these from her to support her business, but she's an amazing jewelry maker. Totally check her out. Um, I, but I love the, this is made with some coral and again, like I saw them and in her like Etsy shop and I was like, oh my gosh, these would be perfect with my Alder cardigan and Stasia dress. <laughs> so I had to have them. And this is my, uh, because it's a little chilly today, I wanted to wear a cowl. This is my Could This Be Love in a Mist cowl by Ghost Story Writer. Her name's Beth Hall Designs. And I tested this for her last year sometime, and I get a lot of wear out of this cowl. It, it fits really well. It hugs my neck perfect. Um, and I added mohair with the spin cycle that I used uh, for the motif. And so that little bit of mohair makes it really soft and extra warm. So it's perfect for chilly fall days like today. So let's see, I posted on Instagram and also hashtag like the low tech thing. I, I posted a reel on Instagram for other ways that you could style the Alder cardigan. I find this is a very like versatile piece. So please check out my um, Instagram account if you haven't already done so. And I may actually figure out how to post uh, a short, uh, a YouTube short video or whatever with the different outfits styling the Alder cardigan so it's on my channel too. But um, I had four other outfits that I did with the older cardigan and that is um a pair of corduroy kasheka pants with a bedrock tee that was outfit one and then a pair of high-waisted jeans and a cropped graphic tee from black mountain yarn shop that was outfit number two and um outfit number three was arthur pants and a bedrock tee a different color bedrock tee and all of the patterns are by like so liber so liberated. Um, and this is one of the four outfits that I'm wearing. I really had a lot of fun styling this multiple ways. I can see wearing it with other dresses. I've already got in my wardrobe too, but I I really did want to show off the versatility of this garment because I do love it so much. So I hope that you know you checking out the different ways that I've styled this gives you some inspiration on how to style maybe your own alder cardigan if you decide to make one yourself or a cardigan you already have in your wardrobe that you really love. So I wanted to share <laughs> what I'm knitting on. Um, I haven't been knitting much while I've been talking, but I'm not one of those people. I can't really like knit and not look. Um, I would love to be one of those people, but I'm, I'm not a no look knitter yet. I, I really enjoy just like the whole visual process of knitting and seeing what I'm doing. So that really drives the whole, I haven't tried to learn how to knit without looking yet. Um, so there's that. Cause I kind of like, I just, I like the visual of the yarn and the needles and clicking in my hands. So this is actually the Highline Henley sweater. Um, it is a cute little striped thing um, by Tori Knits NYC. And I will put in the description of the um, 
video. I will link to my other like outfits I will, for the Alder. I will link to Tori's finished um, Highline Henley so you can kind of see more like what this design will look like. Um, it does have buttons, so I'm really excited about that. It's got, it'll have buttons on the collar. But these, um, this is Jill Draper Kingston DK that I'm using from Black Mountain Yarn Shop. And I love how earthy it is, of course. So, <laughs> um, I'm really, yeah, I'm really excited about it. And so I will share more about this project when I finish it. I do have some other whips going. I have a couple of test knits, but they will be finished up. The other, all of my test knits will be finished up by December 3rd. And I'm not taking any more test knits after that until the new year to honor slowing down with the Christmas holiday coming. And I just don't, I just don't want the pressure of deadlines. Um, I, it's pressure I put on myself fully take ownership of that but I want to make sure that I can slow down and spend more time with my family as well as make things for my family I really would like to make some socks for my kids this uh, December and I plan on sewing Christmas PJ pants for all of us <laughs> to wear this um, this holiday together so I, yeah, I just would like to free up some more time for some family making and family time in general. So I do want to share like my weekend sewing plans. I, you know, so this weekend I plan on sewing up some PJ pants for the boys. They're matching PJ pants. So I brought... <laughs> This is the fabric. So this is my son's pair of pants. Look at his little britches. They're so cute. Um, this is fabric from my local quilt shop uh, in Alto, close by. And it's just so cute. I, I My husband actually picked this fabric out. And these are kind of like test run pants to see how they fit for each of them for the Christmas PJ pants that I want to sew for the family. And they've been wanting me to, the boys have been wanting me to sew something for them for a while. And I'm finally doing it. I recently sewed Dia de los Mortis dresses for me and my daughter. This is her dress. This is the Valerie dress by Freckled Pear. Um, my friend Renee Chop Chop Stitch from Black Mountain turned me on to this pattern. It's so cute. It's a lined bodice um, and a zippered back. So it's just a great little girl dress. Um, and it comes in a, a, a nice range of sizes so I can keep making them for Ella as she grows. So this is hers with little uh, patch pockets in the front. And then I made a matching hinterland. So I purposefully made mine sleeveless because it can still sometimes be warm in October. Um, so I wanted the option to be able to wear it, you know, in warmer weather, but also, you know, I have a lot of sweaters and I actually just finished my wool and honey sweater. And that's the sweater that I envisioned wearing this with. So I do plan on getting some photos with this um, and my wool and honey soon. But these are stash buttons that my mom gave me years ago, Lord. <laughs> and this is a longer hinterland, but I love this fabric also from my local quilt shop. And I'm just now kind of getting to the point in my sewing career. I don't really know what you call it. But anyway, with my sewing skills, I finally, I feel confident enough to like add tags as I go. And these are little Sarah Hart's tags from Black Mountain Yarn Shop. I just, I love them. And um, actually um, my friend Danny, who owns Black Mountain Yarn Shop, um, gave me these for my birthday last year. So they're going to good use. I have these in some of my sweaters too. I did, I put one of these in my Tutka cardigan by Caitlin Hunter and my Weekender Crew by Andrea. 
Nile wreath. So, yay! I love I love this dress. I've already worn it a couple of times and styled it a couple of different ways. Um, it's just like super versatile. So. I'm obsessed. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm like obsessed with the hinterland dress pattern. It is like the dress of my dreams. I plan on taking their the So Liberated online creative hinterland dress class um, soon, like within the next, like sometime this winter, because I'm that obsessed with the pattern. I want to learn how to pattern hack the hinterland dress, but I also think learning from that course will, I can generalize those skills to other, you know, um, like to other patterns. So that's my hope, like to, you know, build my sco sewing, <laughs> sewing skill set with um, taking that course. So let's see, um, so other plans this weekend, I definitely plan on working out and want to lift heavy tomorrow and see what happens. And then, um, you know, hopefully I can move some decent weight and my husband and I have a run date planned on Sunday. We have childcare secured and we'll go out and run together for a while and then go get coffee. So that's been a nice like Sunday tradition that we've established the last couple of months. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I think that's it that I have to share for today. Looking ahead and what you can expect from me and this channel is, um, I do plan on consistently sharing. I, I, I'm not going to necessarily commit to posting at a certain frequency, like every week or whatever. I'm going to share or post a vlog whenever it feels appropriate to me or you know like I feel like I have something to share and so that may be weekly it may end up you know bi-weekly sometimes it may be monthly if life is like really busy so I'm just gonna honor what you know what content comes to mind and what it is that I have to share I definitely will be sharing about my making and finished objects that I have um, you know coming up in the future and I do know for certain within the next week or so, I will be sharing a vlog about tips to slow down for the holidays and really honoring your needs over the holiday season because Halloween is here <laughs> next Tuesday. I can't believe it. It's crazy. Um, and that kind of kicks off the start of the the end of the year for me. Um, you know, Halloween, I kind of see as the first of the Holy Grail trifecta holidays. You know, it's like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Well, I guess that's four, but anyway, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it's like the year's over, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and then Christmas. So it's really important. I mean, the holidays can be really hectic and stressful. Um, you know, it can be a very joyful time, but it, it can also be a, a time of grief and loss for people and for change too. And change can be really hard. So I want to share some tips about how to slow down for the holidays or, you know, really set strong boundaries for yourself, but also, I mean, really share what some of the things that I plan on doing for myself. And if you want to steal some of those you're welcome to. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for, if you did get to this point, like all the way to the end, thank you so much for spending time with me and listening to what it is that I had to share about. Um, I would love to hear from you. So I am going to link up my email in the um, description or the show notes. Um, so the email is edmistoncreations at gmail.com. Please email me and let me know if there's specific content or ideas that you would like to hear more about from me, or if you have like any 
Mm. If you have any questions for me that you would like me to answer, um, I definitely am open to doing like a Q and A vlog uh, once I accrue enough questions. So please, yeah, send me an email and let me know your thoughts or what you would like to hear more about from me. And be sure to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. It feels so funny saying that. I can't believe I'm doing this. Yay! <laughs> um, but that's it. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend doing what you love with the people that you love. Happy making!